We are going to explain the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah Daf Chaf Amud Beis 20b according to the Baal Amar. This explanation differs significantly from that of Rashi's, so be sure not to confuse the two. First, we are going to explain two ideas, the date line and the visibility of the new moon. Afterwards, using this information, we will go through a few key phrases in the Gemara and explain them. What is the date line? The date line is an imaginary line on the Earth's surface that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole and marks the change of one calendar day to the next. According to the Baal Ma'ar, the Halachic date line passes through the middle of the Sea of China, 90 degrees east of Jerusalem. If you would travel around the world, each time you enter a new time zone, you would be changing standard time by one hour. After a complete circuit around the globe, you would have adjusted your clock time by 24 hours. This would lead to a difference of one day between the date on your clock and the real calendar date. The purpose of the dateline is to compensate for this discrepancy. On crossing the dateline in either direction, the calendar date is adjusted by one day. If you cross the dateline moving east, you would subtract a day, whereas if you are moving west, you would add a day. If in China it's the morning of Monday, then in Japan it's morning of Sunday. Now, a trip around the world will no longer lead to a difference between the date on your clock and the local calendar date. Let's discuss another idea, the moon's visibility. Each day, the sun and the moon move through the sky from east to west. The sun travels a little bit faster than the moon and catches up to it and passes it every 30 days. Before catching up to it, as the sun gets closer to the moon, the moon's appearance gets smaller and smaller until it is seen as a very thin crescent right before it vanishes under the glare of the sun. The sun has not quite reached the moon yet, but its brightness and proximity make the moon invisible. When the sun actually catches up with the moon, that exact moment is referred to as the molat, or in English, conjunction. The time between the moment the moon disappears and the molad is 24 hours. This is what the Gemara means when it says that the moon is hidden for 24 hours. It means that the moon cannot be seen within 24 hours before or after the molad due to its small size and closeness to the bright sun. 24 hours after the sun passes the moon, the moon's crescent becomes big enough to see if conditions are just right. At that time, the sun and moon are still pretty close to each other. So if it's in the middle of the day, when the sky is bright, the moon cannot be seen at all. The only way the tiny crescent moon can be seen at that first moment is if it happens in the evening, as the sun is setting in the west, darkening the sky, just before the new moon itself sets. Now, let's put all the pieces together. The Gemara says that if the mullet happens before midday, then the new moon can be seen at sunset. What does this mean? According to the Balamar, it means that if the mullet happens before midday in Yerushalayim, then the new moon can be seen somewhere in the world by evening time that same day. Let's see how this works. Let's imagine that we are in Yerushalayim and it is right before midday, let's say at 11 o'clock in the morning on Monday, which means the sun is rising high in the east, close to the middle of the sky. If the molot happens at this moment, then that means that the moon is also about halfway through the sky, yet we wouldn't be able to see it because it's too close to the sun. If we wait until sunset to see the moon, we will be disappointed because, as we said earlier, we need a full 24 hours to pass from the molot in order to see the moon. If we wait the full 24 hours until 11 o'clock tomorrow morning on Tuesday, then we still won't see the moon because the sun is too bright at that time of day. We will have to wait until tomorrow evening at sunset. So if the mullet happens today at 11 in the morning on Monday, then we will not be able to see the new moon in Yerushalayim that day. But perhaps there is another place on earth that will have better conditions. Places in the west are several hours behind places in the east. So if we were to move westward, then our clock will be set back as we enter each new time zone. The further west we go, the further back in time will we set our clocks. If we move one hour to the west, then the molad won't happen at 11 o'clock Monday morning, but rather at 10 o'clock Monday morning. Further west, 9 o'clock. And then 8. If we go all the way around the world and come to Japan, then we will be 18 hours behind Yerushalayim. What is 18 hours behind 11 o'clock Monday morning? 
In order to help with these calculations, we're going to use a 24 hour clock. A 24 hour clock is just like a regular clock, except that instead of 12 hours, it has 24. 12 noon is at the top. 12 midnight is at the bottom. The top half of the clock is white, roughly representing daytime hours, whereas the bottom half is black, representing nighttime. Going clockwise from midnight to noon, we'll find sunrise about halfway up the left side, at about 6 o'clock a.m. Coming down from noon on the right side will be sunset, at about 6 o'clock p.m. This type of clock makes it easy to add or subtract 18 hours from any given hour of time. Since this is a 24-hour clock, 18 hours is represented by a 3 quarter circle sweep around the clock. Therefore, to calculate an 18-hour difference, we will go 3 quarters of the way around the clock. For example, 6 o'clock a.m. on Thursday, minus 18 hours, is 12 noon the day before, on Wednesday. So we said if the mullet happens today at 11 in the morning on Monday in Yerushalayim, then we will not be able to see the new moon there that day. We found that traveling west moves the clock back in time. If we go all the way around the world and come to Japan, then we will be 18 hours behind Yerushalayim. What is 18 hours behind 11 o'clock Monday morning? Five PM Sunday evening. This is the farthest back in time we can go because if we continue west and cross the Sea of China, we will have crossed the date line, which, as we said earlier, would require adjusting the calendar date forward by one day, making it Monday evening. So let's stay in Japan and see what happens. In Japan, it's five o'clock PM Sunday evening. In Yerushalayim, it's eleven o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. We want to know if there's somewhere in the world that will see the new moon today, on Monday. The answer is yes. When the mullet happens at 11 a.m. in Yerushalayim, it is 5 p.m. Sunday evening in Japan. The moon is still too small to be seen at the time of the mullet. How long will it take for the new moon to become visible? 24 hours. So after 24 hours, in Japan, it is now late Monday afternoon just before sunset and as the sky darkens, the very first sliver of the new moon can be seen in the western sky. So, it comes out that when the mullet happens before midday in Yerushalayim, there is a place on earth that will see the new moon that same day. But what if the mullet happens after midday in Yerushalayim? Would that be so bad? Let's see what happens. Let's say that the mullet happens when in Yerushalayim it is just after midday on Monday, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. When can the moon next be seen? In 24 hours, at 1 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday. Where can the moon be seen? Not in Yerushalayim, because it's in the middle of the day. Perhaps in Japan? No, not either. Japan is 18 hours behind Yerushalayim. That means if it's 1 p.m. in Yerushalayim, then it is 7 p.m. the night before in Japan. At 7 p.m., the sun and the moon have already set. If the moon has set, then you can't see it, unless if you could see through the earth. Besides, even if you could see the moon, it wouldn't help, because once the sun has set, it would halakhically already be considered Tuesday. So, it comes out that midday in Yerushalayim is a critical moment. If the mullet happens there before midday, then the new moon can be seen today somewhere in the world that day. Otherwise not. We can now understand another line in the Gemara. The Gemara says that the night and the day have to be part of the new. What does that mean? It means that in order for today to be the first day of the month, there needs to be a place on earth where the Molot happens before today. Halakhically, the calendar date begins at night, so in order for the Molot to be considered to have happened before today, it would have to happen before last night. Today is Monday. In order for today to be the first day of the month, there needs to be a place on earth where the Molot happens before today, meaning on Sunday so that the whole first night and day of the new month are after the molot. In the examples that we gave, we found that if the molot happens before midday in Yerushalayim, then there is a place on earth where it is still late Sunday afternoon over in Japan. Therefore, Monday can be the first day of the new month. This is so that the new moon will be seen on the first day of the month. Now, there is only one piece of the Gemara left that still needs explaining. It's going to be a ride, so hold on. If you've made it this far, then chances are you'll make it to the end. 
In the example we gave, we spoke about a situation where they saw the new moon at the first possible moment in the farthest place west, Japan, on Monday evening. For those in Israel, where it is almost noontime on Tuesday, we said they cannot see the new moon because it is too bright in the sky. When will they see the new moon after this moment? Tuesday evening, at sunset. How many hours after Japan did Israel see the new moon? Six hours. While we were in Japan watching the first moment of the new moon, they in Israel couldn't see it for another six hours. For them, six hours of the new. What if it were the other way around? What if instead of us in Japan being the first to see the new moon, the situation was such that it was them in Israel who saw it first in the world? How would that be? Let's say the mullet happens when in Israel it's Sunday evening near sunset, let's say at about 6 p.m. The new moon won't be seen for 24 hours, which means they will see it Monday evening at 6 p.m. This is the first time that the new moon can be seen, and it can only be seen at sunset, which it is in Israel. What time is it then in Japan? Remember, Japan is 18 hours behind. 6 p.m. Monday minus 18 hours is midnight of Sunday night. The new moon cannot be seen unless if it is near sunset. When will we in Japan experience our next sunset? Tomorrow evening. Assuming sunset is at about 6 p.m., in how many hours will we see the new moon? You got it. 18 hours. That means that when Israel sees the new moon before anyone else, we in Japan will not see it for another 18 hours. For us, 18 of the new. Now, just in case things weren't complicated enough, let's complicate things a bit further. Until now, we have been speaking about the new moon. What about the old moon? How does that work? What is the old moon anyway? The old moon is exactly what it sounds like. If the new moon is the first moment that the moon can be seen after the molad, then the old moon is the last moment the moon can be seen before the molad. Let's calculate for each place the last moment that the old moon can be seen. Before the sun catches up with the old moon, the moon is still a bit ahead of the sun. That means that the moon will rise and set first. We cannot see it at sunset because we need the sun to set to see such a small moon. Yet by that time, the moon, being first, has already set. To see it, we will need to look when it rises first before the sun in the morning, in the east. So, the last moment the old moon can be seen is only in the morning, in the east, around the time the sun rises, at about 6 o'clock a.m. Let's make it Monday morning in Yerushalayim. What time is it, and what day is it, in Japan? 6 a.m. minus 18 hours is noontime the day before, on Sunday. How long ago in Japan could we have seen the old moon? 6 hours. Remember, the old moon can only be seen in the morning, right around sunrise. So when they've seen the old moon at the last possible moment in Yerushalayim, we, in Japan, have seen it six hours before. For us, six hours of the old. Okay, there's only one last step. What if we, in Japan, saw the old moon at the last possible moment when it was 6 a.m. for us? When did they last see it in Yerushalayim? Well, at that moment, it's midnight by them. How long ago did they see the old moon? How long ago was sunrise? 18 hours ago. For them, 18 hours of the old. And that's it. You now understand the most complicated thing ever. After this, everything just gets easier. <laughs>